It's not a secret that I have a strong disdain for channels trying too hard to be positive. I couldn't help but be cynical about it. You might have seen the last video that I've done. After the whole fiasco Malaysia had with Outer Side of the Truth, it revealed to me how little these people cared about the countries they've talked about in their videos. The bitter truth about it is that most of these YouTubers only cared about getting clicks and views for as little effort as possible. Appealing to the blind pride that most people have in their respective countries is one of them. It appealed to the heartstrings of people who depended on this content to feel validated. And as much as I hate to admit it, this type of vapid content that these YouTubers provide is what makes them so successful in the first place. One channel that makes this particular content is the Diet Coke version of Prince EA, Nas Daily. He got caught up with a big controversy recently in the Philippines. Granted, this isn't the first time he got himself in that spot, but we'll talk more about it at the end of the video. For now, let's explore this story together and find out how this controversy came to be. The story started with an online course he created. This particular course was supposed to feature a well-regarded traditional Filipino tattoo artist named Wang Odd. According to the now-deleted page to this course, Nas Daily stated that Wang Odd would teach those who enrolled in this course the rituals, tools, and methods for making traditional tattoos. The entry fee for this course starts at 750 pesos, or 62 ringgit and 81 cents. However, this course he tried to peddle failed, as one of the grandnieces of Wang Odd called the entire scheme a scam. She said that her grandmother had never agreed nor consented to host any of these courses launched by Nas Daily. More than anything, his decision seemed to be motivated by his desire to ride on other people's art and culture for money, not to preserve it. Unfortunately, Nas Daily did not take these criticisms well. He went on this weird damage control by insisting that the online course he created was not a scam. He also went further to say that he did get consent from Wang Ot herself to conduct this course. He even got video footage to prove it. Unfortunately, it became clear now that Wang Ot didn't understand what the translators said as she put her thumbprint onto that paper. In other words, his paper, as proof of her consent, was meaningless. It's very scummy of him to think he was still in the right despite that fact. On the silver lining, his combative attitude will eventually be the catalyst for more people to come out against him. Luis de Guzman Mapulo is the founder of the Cacao Project. This project started with the desire to help San Fernando farmers during the aftermath of the Nak 10 typhoon in 2016. In 2019, Nas Daly decided to head over to Luisa's hometown to cover the cacao project. She was pretty jubilant about the idea, since she was a big fan of Nas Daly, even went so far as to welcome their arrival with open arms. Then things get sour when he starts mocking the local accent and calling the farmers and Filipinos poor. He also compares that nothing about her venture would get him the clicks to drive his views to the roof as he always been. He did mention, jokingly, that all he has to do is to put the name Philippines in the title and millions would flock to his video, spamming the usual Pinoy pride comments. Based on the account given by Luis so far, you can at least draw parallels to how other side of the truth uses the word Malaysia to get all of the views from here. Unfortunately, many people here are just too impressionable to see how often they fall for this tactic. But I digress. Louise continued with her Facebook post to lambast Nas Daily further, basically calling him ungrateful for everything her family had done to him. Apparently, according to Nas, her family's decision to let him stay in their house and prepare his breakfast the whole morning is a waste of time. She was quoted saying, I've worked with journalists, documentary makers, and professors who had seen my work, interviewed me, and even featured us, and have had no negative experiences that could ever brush up to what I saw that day. 
blatant discrimination of my people, no regard for local customs or cultures, and he built a story in his mind without meaningfully understanding the context of what he was going to cover. As a result, he was disappointed that my work wasn't the perfectly packaged story he predetermined and imagined. I mean, what visual popcorn can you create out of a farm? Anyways, if you want to read this Facebook post in full, I highly recommend you checking it out after you've done watching this video. All of the relevant links will be in the description below. In short, everything that she said in this post points to him being an absolute scumbag. What people knew him as a cheerful and positive person on the outside turns out to be the biggest douchebag on the inside. All he cares about is clicks, clicks, and clicks. He throws a tantrum like a baby when things don't go his way. This fiasco had left an everlasting impression on Louise, making her very distrustful towards anyone who tries to feature her pet project. And honestly, who can blame her? After everything that she went through, she has every right to be pissed. However, that didn't stop our good old friend Nas from opening his mouth again. Oh boy, where do I start with this dumpster fire of a response post? For one thing, all of the content in that post is pure gaslighting, and the post was also littered with him trying to guilt trip Louise. He tried to shift the blame to her for supposedly lying about the scale of her pet project. This is a bold-faced lie. She made it clear that the scale of her pet project is still relatively small before he decided to fly out of Singapore. His misplaced expectations on the Kakao project is of no fault other than his own. Then he tries to guilt trip her by implying that she had wasted their time coming to her place only to return empty handed due to her supposed lie. I was very inspired by his story. In fact, I was so inspired by what you achieved that I flew in from Singapore to the province in the Philippines just to support you. Even though we flew in for two days, we had to pack up and leave because I will never ever put fake news on Nas Daily. I was so sad because we have invested tens of hours in supporting you. I flew back to Singapore disappointed, but of course, I didn't want to hurt you. I would never want to do that. I flew in to support you in the first place. Next, he tries to debunk the accusations of his racism by mentioning that his company consisted of 40% Filipinos. What? This argument is as shallow as saying, I have a black friend, therefore, I can call them poor and not being called racist for it. Nas, you got some serious allegations against you. That kind of off-handed response does not inspire people's confidence you think it is. What does it say about you when the only thing that you have to counter this argument is to bring up the percentage of your Filipino workers? Finally, it wouldn't be right if I haven't pointed out how narcissistic he is. If you read through this response post, his holier-than-thou attitude was plastered all over it. The tone of this post genuinely comes off as being condescending, an act in which he seems to downplay everybody else who criticized him. And you can't help but wonder whether his intentions of showing the good side of the world all this while has been genuine or not. It seems that he was using the achievement he has to boost his ego and project himself as being the good guy in the situation, when he's clearly not. As you can see in the picture, we are trying to tell the world about your story. By the way, no other media did that, they just report from their fancy offices, but we wanted to go the extra mile for you. From making Nas Daily, I have learned that sometimes good intentions do go unnoticed, in fact, Good intentions get punished sometimes, but examples like yours will never stop us from believing in the good of humanity. We will continue to support the Philippines, and we will continue to promote people who need their stories told. Hopefully one day, I can come back and tell your story again. You are, after all, an inspiring individual. Okay, I think we get the point already. Let's cut it short and conclude the video here. Before doing that, I wanted to touch upon multiple other controversies that Nas Daily got himself in, in the past. If his attempt to profit off of other people's cultures and have a nasty attitude is already terrible enough for you, it gets worse from here. 
He has some questionable views on the Palestinian occupation, and he also props up an authoritarian government in Singapore. He possesses the opinions that he did because he was born in a privileged family. Specifically, an Arab who was born in Israel, in a family that had given all the opportunity in the world for him to get a good education in Harvard. Not to mention that he used to have jobs that paid so well. Not everyone can afford to live a high life like this, and he knows it. But what he didn't seem to understand is how his privilege blinded him to the world around him. It's why he kept on blaming both sides in the Palestinian conflict, looking past the fact that Palestine had constantly been bullied to submission by Israel for decades. It's why he keeps on parroting the rhetoric of how the government is good, disregarding the authoritarianism he is living in right now and how it affects the general populace. The question of whether or not his opinions are wrong didn't matter to him. As long as the issue does not affect him personally, he does not care in the slightest. After all, he was rolling in cash for being such a Mr. Positive Man on Facebook. It's natural for him to be so smug when he feels that he is that invincible against the many criticisms levied against him for all these years. He is overconfident over the fact that he will do no wrong. And this overconfidence is why he finds no issue trying to use other people's cultures to make a quick buck for himself. The only way he can realize his mistakes is for his large number of followers to turn against him. Until then, his overinflated ego will never go anywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video, and a huge shout out to my $10 patron, La Dame Beton. If you would like to see more of this type of content, do consider supporting me on Patreon or subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does help out a lot. Thank you. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.